Good afternoon and welcome back to The Lynn Lowdown. I'm Danny Vittori and today we have on Selvin Chambers, the Executive Director of Life Scene. Thanks for coming back on the show. Danny, thanks for having me back again. Anytime I get to talk about the work that we do in serving the community, I'm always excited about that. Well, we're always excited to have you on too. So we talked to you, I think it was back in like July, I want to say in the summer. So yes. what has been happening since then? Well, a lot has been happening. As, as you know, we were in the midst of a rebranding and changing our name from Family and Children's Services. We are now Life Scene, and we haven't changed the scope of our work. We still service, service youth and families in the community and our family support programs and our uh, youth programs, which is Project Success, which is a career and job development program. So we're still serving the community in the way that we, we have been and really thinking about ways that we can enhance our service to the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as we're getting towards the end of the year, getting towards holidays, I know you mentioned a few events that Life Scene puts on to help families. Do you want to talk about any of them? Well, our upcoming event, we're actually doing a campaign called Hope for the Holidays. And Hope for the Holidays is a campaign that provides food and gift cards to families during the holiday season to provide them an opportunity to care for their, their families. And we're really excited about that. And we're focusing really on the families that are actually in our existing programs. And we're also soliciting donations to help support the food and gift drive uh, to make sure families are fed and healthy during the holidays, but also able to give meaningful gifts to their uh, families during the, the holiday season. And so we're excited about that. We have two upcoming events for distribution for those gift cards to our existing families. And one is on December 13th in Lynn, and the other one is December 15th in Chelsea. And the goal there is to really come and celebrate, provide pictures, opportunities, uh, music for the holidays, a tree lighting ceremony, and a festive opportunity as we give the families their gift cards to celebrate the holidays. So we're excited about that. And again, we're soliciting donations for that. And we're looking for volunteers to help staff those uh, events. And those events will take place between 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. So we're making sure that it's staggered, but it's an opportunity to kind of give food and music and fun opportunity to celebrate the work we do with our community. Well, definitely sounds like a fun event to me, a good event. And for looking for, you said, food donation to gift cards, is it, could anyone donate to that, or how does that work? Anyone can, can donate. They can go to our uh, website, which is lifescene.org, and there's actually a special event category there where they can either volunteer or make a donation for the Hope for the Holiday initiative. Great. And when you go on, especially with the gift cards, are there maybe specific places or kinds of places you tend to not look for exactly but ask for that might really help the families or is it kind of you leave it up to the people donating? So what happens when they make a, a donation to us what we do is that we purchase the gift cards for the family so the oh, families okay. can go so what we we're intentionally with we didn't decide where the family can go shop so giving them a visa gift card allows them to go to any grocery store or to any store to shop for their families it allows them and empowers the family to make those decisions but when you give us a gift card it narrows down where they can go to get the food or the gifts for their family no, that, that makes sense because I was I'm thinking wait how the, that that makes more sense to me that makes way more sense but I said I love that you have that event, you have the holiday event, event, and in terms of volunteers, how would people volunteer? So again, they can go to our website, and we don't just need volunteers for our Hope for the Holiday initiatives, but we also have our Project Success Career Development Program, where they can come in and, and help work with the young people who are developing their career opportunities. There's an also an opportunity for volunteers to do parenting courses and also people to be guest speakers or to facilitate workshops for our families from financial literacy to ESOL to a plethora of different opportunities that will help enhance uh, the family support initiatives that we take in our house. So you're always looking for volunteers for a lot of different programs, holiday all the time. ones, all the ones you just all mentioned. All year round, yes, yes. So you had a really big year this year, rebranding, name change. When you're thinking about kind of, I guess, next year going, going into a new year, what are some of your goals, would you say? So we're looking to broaden our reach with the population that we serve now. And so we're onboarding new staff. We actually have several staff positions open where we're looking for clinicians, we're looking for case managers. We're looking for youth engagement specialists, so there's opportunities for employment with us as well. And we're also 
going to host our annual event this coming April, I think on April 20th. Haven't found a location yet. Uh, we're always looking for uh, host committee members to help with the planning process for that. So there are a lot of opportunities for people to engage with the work that we, we do. The thing that's really important to us is that we don't do this work in isolation. It's in collaboration because our whole focus as an organization is how do we help youth and families move to a position of self-sustainability. Uh, I tell our team we're doing a good job when we put ourselves out of business. And it's kind of harsh for people. I said what I mean by that that when someone has gotten everything they can and they have a leg up and they're ready to move on to the next thing, then we've done our job. And then we look to help other people in the community that need the support that we provide to them. So yes, definitely you want to be able to support them, but then also give them the supporter, not give them, but like help them access the supporter resources so that they can then go and move on. And right. And it's really about self-navigation, that you have the mm -hmm. skill sets to be able to kind of navigate the social service system, whether it's from housing, or whether it's workforce employment, or whether it's parenting opportunities, right? That's what we want to be really do, is help people be empowered to be able to take care of themselves and move forward in life. Definitely, which I think I love. I think that's a great opportunity for them to work with. And you mentioned once, was there one specific program you just mentioned that you said was coming up? Not the holiday one, but there was... I just forgot that. So we, we do have uh, Project Success, that which is a it. program for youth ages 14 to 24 years old of age. We will be recruiting the next cohort that will start in late February. We have a cohort that's taking place now. That's a program where the young people are paid $15 an hour. It's uh, run five days a week. So on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, they come to our organization where they get to enhance their career and job development skills, where they have guest speakers, they help develop a resume, they have a dress for success opportunity, really how to show up for the, for the job. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, they're assigned to a collaborating partner in the community. For example, Hadasha Homes has two interns that are working with them. The Boys and Girls Club has interns there with them. The Real Project has interns there. At one point, we had two interns who were working at the... Um, for the school department. So we have lots of opportunities for young people and we're gearing up for that next cohort of young people. And I, I do, I remember you mentioned that. We did, we had a group actually visiting here too. They came this summer, they yes. They came this the, summer, yes, yeah. yes, yes, they were excited to come here and it's funny, they, they see what happens on, on the screen, but they didn't realize how much takes place behind the scenes in the preparatory process to, to be on the screen. So they were really excited about that. Yeah, there is. And being interns at any of these places, you learn so much about how they're run. I mean, even just in the interviews that I do, there's just so much behind the scenes that you don't think of when you look at an organization. Definitely not. And that's a, what we're trying to provide our young people in the Project Success is the opportunity to, to explore career opportunities and have them really think about their pathway. Are they going right into a job? Are they going to college? Are they going to a trade program? So really giving them the opportunity to be introduced to the pathways and having them decide which pathway is best for them. Something I wish I had in high school. I know, I'm sitting here going, I wish someone had done that for me. That would have been really helpful. I mean, college is great, and it is, but right. it, it, it can be really overwhelming. Oh, definitely. There are so many different past opportunities, which is great that there can be so many opportunities, but you have to be able to navigate them. Right. The great thing about Project Success is even when you graduate from the program, that if you still need help with a college application or if you need help honing your employability skills or help uh, practicing inter for an interview, just because you have graduated from the program doesn't mean we're not still open to you. You can still come back to kind of learn and work with the staff to kind of hone your skills and perfect your skills. I think a program like that is great. He said they can still come back. It's not just like, a, oh, you're done, that's it. <laughs> Go figure it out. Right. I definitely like that design. And I may have just ah, asked you this before, but how long have you been the executive director there? I've been there 19 months. You know, it's coming okay. up in two years uh, soon, and uh, it seemed like it's, it was a lifetime ago that I got yeah, there. I know. And a lot has, has happened and transpired over that time, and we're really focusing on really enhancing our programs and also providing quality services to support more people in the community. And for people who are looking to get more information about you, looking to find you, like what would be the best way? Go to your location, email? Well, the best way is to go to uh, lifescene.org, look at our website. There's uh, contact information there to connect with the work that we do, and we will have someone follow up with them with the information that they request. So the website is always the best way to go. 
Or they can walk in. So if we, we're open between uh, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 to 6, and on Tuesday and Thursday, we're open 9 to 5. Great. Well, I want to thank you again for again, coming in to talk about the programs, the holiday events, all the things you have going on. Well, thank you for providing this opportunity for us to speak about the opportunities for uh, families in the community that are looking for support. So that's what we're here to do, and we work in collaboration with uh, folks such as Lynn Public Television to kind of really make sure people are aware of what the opportunities are in the community. Of course, the work that your organization does and so many there, they're so important. Oh. So we always like getting to show what you guys do. Well, thank you. It's a partnership. So. Yes, of course. And once again, I'm Danny Vittori. This has been the Lynn Lowdown, and we will see you next week with more guests.